Thank you very much for the uh, invitation to talk, which uh, perhaps comes as a result of the uh, silver sponsorship uh, contribution, which we're very happy to make. And thanks to Dave for the uh, preceding talk, which was uh, very interesting and stimulating. I think there's some uh, plenty of uh, interesting ideas to follow up there. And uh, quite a few similarities and, and parallels to, to what a um, few words I'm going to say. So I'm Steve Brewer, for those that don't know me. I've come up from the University of Southampton. I'm the network coordinator of the uh, IT as a utility Network Plus project. So just a quick introduction of what I'm, I'm going to talk about, which is um, a bit about the, the project and the, the people involved in it, the network, running the network, some of the schemes we're doing, um, our progress to date, and some plans for the future. One of the things I noticed when we were having the coffee before we started is, is the badges of what we're all wearing. We've got little symbols on, which is excellent. But I realised there's one missing from my badge, which is little pots of money, because we do have money that can be uh, obtained, which I'll be mentioning. So uh, we'll perhaps update that later. You can probably register. Right, blame me, blame me. It's not like £5 though. Yeah, it's more than £5. more than £5. Okay, thank you, Charlotte. So, IT is a utility. I'll say a few words about the term in a bit. But the, uh, the interesting thing is this um, comes under the, the um, Research Council's UK Digital Economy theme. We're one of four um, sub, sub themes within that area. And the, the, the driving force behind this is that the desire to support multidisciplinary research to bring people together from different um, areas, different disciplines but also, more broadly than that, from different domains, different sectors. So as well as the research that's going on in universities, also the research departments in organisations, commercial organisations, and also policy-making bodies as well. So the, the, the leaders of this, the, the principal investigator is uh, Professor Jeremy Frey, uh, Professor of Chemistry at the University of Southampton, that a number of you will know. And um, you see the other names there from Ulster, Queen Mary in London, University of Nottingham, and also Southampton. And I uh, also mentioned the other sub-networks that we're, we're working together with, which cover sustainable society, communities and culture, and new economic models. So as well as doing the work within our own networks, we have meetings and share, share ideas between those two. I mentioned the advisory group. Um, this is like uh, a driving force behind the wider network. And this also gives you um, a flavour of the breadth of interest that we, we've brought together for this project. Uh, we've got, as well as the, the university representation, a number of companies representing key areas in computing Large companies, famous names, but also some smaller companies. Us two in particular is very interesting. They're based in um, Shoreditch in London and um, specialists in user interface design. They develop a lot of um, games and apps and things that you'd be familiar with. And the model of how they work is quite interesting. So c companies such as Sony, who develop the, the, the packages, applications, etc., will turn to companies like this who are specialists in doing... what the real front end of these things, and not just de developing the apps, but getting the apps out there. One of the things they say is um, programming, building the app isn't, isn't the, the real challenge, it's getting it out there. And it's that the marketing skills, getting it out through blog channels, their own networks and things, is what drives that process. So a bit more about the, the background of, of where we come from in this um, the network was formally launched last September and um, with the, the, some of the, the goals and the driving forces behind this. So I mentioned uniting research in, in different areas with the um, users, content and data providers. In terms of what IT as a utility is, we don't have a, a formal condensed definition of that. One may emerge from this work but really, the, the, the key driving force, the key term is, is the digital economy, both in, with capital letters in terms of the RCUK project, but also in lowercase with what is the digital economy. There's a strong driver came from the, the political level that sits above these, these funding bodies to say, we're happy to, to do the funding, but we want to see the, 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 the flow of ideas that's coming from research into the real economy. We want some evidence for where these things are going. So 
in other words, we're not looking to purely focus on the, 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 the philosophical ideas, what is IT's utility, etc., but rather through um, assuming that such a thing exists, what are these ideas, how can it actually be translated into to real tangible benefits in, in the, wider, the wider world. So hence the more understanding, the provision, the uptake, the usability, security of, of apps and services, etc., Terms like the future in internet we're familiar with. Um, safety and security are there other um, issues here. And also identifying that the barriers and seeing which people aren't using the, these sorts of services. So in terms of what we're actually doing, as I mentioned, we've, we've, we've got a pot of money which we've been given over the, the, uh, the course of the three-year project. And there's a number of um, schemes that we're, we're, we're offering which will be done in, in multiple stages over the time. So the first one was the pilot projects. We had a call out earlier in the year, we went through a re review process, and two projects have been given um, funding for, for the next six months. Trusted Tiny Things, and the one with the, uh, the very long title, not that I'm one to talk about having long titles, using wireless networks to support first responders and resilience in upland areas. And the Trusted Tiny Things um, comes from the, the ideas behind the, the, the Internet of Things, so what we're looking at in a lot of areas is the, the interfaces to, to networks, whether it's um, sensors, sensor networks, wireless, mobile phones and other devices, and how those are made sense of. So the first one, um, based up at the University of Ed uh, Aberdeen, is looking at transport systems and uh, connecting data from things, whether it's cars, buses, public transport, and seeing how that, that can um, be used beneficially. And they're looking at the level of um, the, the security of the data and working with incomplete data. And this is, this is heightened in the second project um, in, in rescue services, where you've got um, professional bodies working in rescue teams, linking with civilians when necessary. And as many of you will be aware, that things like mobile phones in, in uh, upland areas um, are very um, incomplete in terms of the, the signal. Um, so you need to manage the, the rescue process with this, this world of incomplete data, incomplete signals. And you can imagine you can, that this is a, a critical um, process. And we were discussing this further the other day with some um, other people at one of the workshops who worked, were doing similar things in the, the military context. So if you like traditionally in a, a military way, you have a very hierarchical command structure, orders are followed, ripple down, and they're enacted but increasingly with incomplete data communication networks, and of course there's parallels with this in, in computer games as well in some respects, people have to pass on decisions so that people can work autonomously and then things can work back separately. So these, these ideas which have specific benefits, tangible benefits in, in, in the area where they're being done, have wider benefits in terms of the, the research that's uh, going on. So this was our first pilot project call. There'll be a second call going out later in the year, and details will be on our, our website. One of the other schemes we're doing is secondments. We have a, a call out at the moment. It ends next week on the 29th at the end of the month. So if you're at all interested in this, have a look at the website. You can get further information and um, get an application in. So the, the ideas behind the secondments is the sharing of ideas and, and getting people to, to cross over the boundaries between academic research, commercial research, etc. So the money is available for UK-based academics to spend up to six months in a different environment, perhaps in a business <coughs> research environment. Um, can be abroad, can be in this country. We can offer to do some matchmaking in this context. If, if, if academics come in and say they've got a particular interest in an area, we can help find somewhere. But obviously, if you can come to us with um, the arrangements already in place, I appreciate it's quite hard to do a lot of this in one week, but if you had some strong ideas, and some, we, could, we could put an application and take that further forwards. Some people will be doing multiple secondments, so they might have a number of people going somewhere, or they might do an exchange. It's a very flexible scheme in terms of the the arrangements, we don't expect necessarily an academic to go and spend six months in a, the other end of the country. You can do it part-time, you can do it in bursts, you can do it a certain number of days a week. Um, we don't mind. Obviously, it's got to relate to the ideas around IT as a utility, utility services, and 
There's certain requirements in terms of what you need to feed back in terms of reports and sharing or ideas. So the third key area we're looking at is, is the workshops. Again, there's a, there's a list of some of the things, some we've, we've done, some we're doing. Further details are on the website. These, on the whole, tend to be small, quite focused um, discussions, maybe 10, up to 20 people on a particular theme. Um, the progress to date on some of these, we've done a couple on smart spaces, which spills out into ideas for smart cities. Um, we're planning one on libraries of the future, which is going to be held uh, at the Bodleian here, and we'll do a follow-up to that. <coughs> libraries are particularly interesting in this, this context because of their use of IT, the, the social spaces, uh, the, their information specialists, people are starting to use mobile technology, wanting to interface with data, and from a, a university point of view, research point of view, they're, they're custodians, they've got experience in curation of data. We'll be doing um, a workshop we're planning, up, again, up in the, the Shoreditch area of London, on uh, tangible interfaces to, to networks, which will be more on the, the hardware side of things as, as well as uh, software. Things like standards we're interested in as well. So, finally, I won't read through this list. I've mentioned it's just a recap on the calls that I mentioned. Go to the website for further details and um, the workshops we've done and some future ones coming up, which should encourage you to either come to or recommend to, to colleagues who may be interested. And that is it. We've finally, we've got some, some contact details there. Um, I encourage you to join the network if you're, if you're, sorry, the, the mail list if you're at all interested the just mail list um, or follow us on Twitter or the Facebook page thank you very much <laughs>